So the tip is small, I guess this is copper, it's a little less than the size of a penny. Uh, it's much more expensive than a penny for a single piece of copper that we use, it's something like a thousand dollars, what is it, a hundred thousand times the cost of a penny. But you imagine we have something that small, we have the tip which has a single atom of the apron. So both of these are extremely small things. So what do we need such big machines for for our experiment that all we're working with is very kind of things yeah. we, we need the big machine so you can do everything everything that you need to do right in one in the machine. That's perfectly right. Yeah. So we have to clean the sample, so we need a big chamber to clean the sample, which we need to do. We need to deposit molecules on the sample, so we need another side part to deposit the molecules. And in our experiments, we need it to be really cool, so we need the big chamber to cool everything down. And besides all that, this looks kind of like, well, maybe a submarine with gaskets and heavy stainless steel. It has to be this big because we're keeping uh, air out, so everything's under vacuum and we have big pumps that also allow us to do everything we need. The experiments themselves are uh, pretty simple, I guess. We have the tip, but we're not really looking at the atoms. So we're not really seeing the atoms. What we're doing more is using the tip to feel the atoms. So when there's an atom in our way, we have to move the tip up to get over the atom, and that's what the computers do for us. We use them to move the tip back and forth, and we sense how far up we have to move it. What we're doing is, say this is an atom on the surface, right? We're not able to see it, but if we have something about its size, what we can do is bring it close to the surface and have the computer move it back and forth so we can actually feel when it hits the atom. We can go back and forth over the atom to feel the shape of it. How do you take the information from the atoms you see to make nanotechnology? Very good question. So, if we're just seeing atoms, it's very difficult. What nanotechnology entails is not just building these structures by moving the atoms, but it's the electronic properties of these. So something like a semiconductor. So semiconductors like silicone are what run our computers today it behaves very different electrically than something like a simple piece of silk. So what we can do is, besides just feeling them, we can actually sense its electric properties. Oh, and so you can see how, how much electrons it has to see, to see if you can make something out of it. Yeah, yeah, the number of electrons and how they behave, and how they behave when they join together with other things. Yeah, go ahead. But how can you feel the electricity? Ah, so this is a little more complicated, I guess. Um, so there's 
this part of quantum mechanics that tells us that if we have two materials separated by a little bit, there's some probability that electrons can move in between a vacuum. So there's nothing in between, but electrons can flow between the two materials. So this flow of electrons between the materials changes depending on how many electrons there are. Like so if there's lots and lots of electrons, lots of electrons can flow. Like, like when you get a shock from, from a doorknob. You yeah, to then you're charged up. Or something mm -hmm. metal. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Everybody having a good time down here so far? Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. What was your favorite part of the day? I, re I, I like the water rockets. Water rockets, yeah. I yeah, saw we, everybody we got the, me and my dad saw, saw one of them go off. Nice. You better saw me do that because I was the one who did it the highest. Nice.